I think it's a loss of control. I think that that's why I feel like I'm about to start crying. Good morning, you guys. It's sunny and I'm glad because I am in the midst of medical drama. It is hard when you have a routine, a, like a medical routine or a medical care plan that then has to change for whatever reason. And in this case, it was that we moved from Massachusetts to North Carolina. Um, you guys know we used to, I used to be on IVIG, I think it was about four years, maybe like three and a half or four years. And at first I had it when I was inpatient in the hospital. That was my first dose, handled that well. And then I came into an inf infusion center. <clears throat> I don't know how many times, maybe six times, maybe not even, maybe four times. Then a home nurse came trained us at home and she either came once or twice and I did it all so that she could observe me doing it and then um, we were independent after that and I'm not sure if it was kind of like we fell through the cracks and that's why we were able to do it independently or maybe because that nurse okayed us from like a medical standpoint like they were proficient with sterile protocols and all that. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever the, however it worked, we were independent with it, which was amazing. Of course, we had to take all the protocols of anytime the rate changes. So it's the same rate for about 20 minutes. Then you take your blood pressure and your temperature, and then it'll stay this a uh, higher rate for like an hour. And then you take it again. Whenever the pump beeps, you take your temperature and your blood pressure and those will be the first signs if your body's going to have a reaction and then of course having a readily available EpiPen just in case something were to happen also knowing where to go and who to call if something does happen so that's how it worked for us and we found that it worked best for me to do it around 8 p.m because I had to take Benadryl so I was like drowsy and then the infusion lasted like four hours and then I would just go to sleep after that. Deaccess, go to sleep. And it worked great for those three and a half years. And moving here, I've been off of IVIG for various reasons, including insurance changes and I tried subcutaneous IG for about six months and all of that to say I am back on getting ready to get back on IVIG, which worked best for my body. The trouble is, it's all changed. Protocols are different here, and I am trying to adjust, and it's difficult to adjust. Now, I think the biggest challenge is like, this isn't just a quick injection and the nurse comes and leaves. It's four hours. And so part of the reason we chose to be independent with most of my care, like port accesses and that sort of thing, we do it all. Part of it is we know exactly what was done to it and we know that, hold on, I'm getting a call. Hello. Another medical call about the same thing. Okay, so I was sitting here trying to get all the details worked out about nursing schedules and all of that. And I sat here and I felt like I was about to start crying. And I decided to pick up the camera, although I couldn't find the camera, so it's been a while. <laughs> Cause I was like, you know what? I'm not the only person who feels this. And so I thought I would just kind of verbally process it with you guys. I think it's a loss of control. I think that that's why I feel like I'm about to start crying because in life with 
a chronic illness, a genetic disease, a terminal illness, an everyday struggle, whatever you want to label it as. Life with medical complications. That's what I'll call it. There is an inevitable loss of control. And you learn it in... steps along the way. You learn it as a child when you have to do medical stuff that you don't understand and you don't want to do. You learn it and you learn, okay, I have a loss of control. I, I have to do this and I don't know why. Now as an adult, I know I have to do this and I do know why it's for my body. But um, when you have to switch clinics for whatever reason or your doctor moves to a different clinic and you have to get used to a new doctor all of these changes are hard and um this is one of those and you know part of it is i think before i got that call i think i was mentioning like typically we don't have nursing here at the house for many many reasons and just one of those reasons is the germ factor if we don't need to have another person in the house it'd be better not to for germ exposure and that sort of thing because these nurses have been in other chronically ill patients houses all day. So they go from one house to another. Sometimes those are CF homes and sometimes they're not. Um, but just that reality of like, they've been in potentially like germy environments. And so, yeah, it's just the, it's the weighing the pros and cons. Would it be better for me to stay at home and have somebody come into the home and do the nursing here? Or would it be better for me to go to an infusion center where they typically put CF patients in their own room, but I don't know that to be sure? Like, I don't know. So just trying to make the best decision we can with the information we have. And um, so basically the home care company, I, the other reason that this comes with like, I'm almost in tears is I'm having a lot of trouble with communication. I'm not hearing from people. I call and leave a message and I don't hear back. And so that's both frustrating and, and then I get a call, oh, well, we scheduled you for Friday morning. And I'm like, I literally haven't heard and that's in two days. Like I haven't heard from anybody that wasn't asked of me. Like when would be an okay time? Like it was just told to me and like we can always reschedule of course, but that's a whole nother thing. You guys get it. I'm sure a lot of you guys have walked through circumstances that feel similar, right? Like they schedule you when you're not able and this and that. So, I think it's just, yeah, it's just the, it's the loss of control. And like, I know like who, Peter and I have like been in this house lately and that's our germ pool and we're used to it. Our bodies are used to it. So having another person in the house, um, it's just inevitably a higher risk. But in this case, that is what we have to do. And so that it's not really worth thinking through. So I was thinking just since we've got to make the best of this situation, um, both for the nurse being exposed to us and us being exposed to the nurse, she can feel free to sit at my desk and I'll go sit on the couch out there since I'm going to be drugged anyway. I'll probably be like half asleep and um, drugged meaning on Benadryl. And... Um, that'll keep quite a bit of distance between us. So that's good for everybody's safety. But again, then I guess we can just lice all my desk and it'll sit overnight and then the next day I'll come back to my desk and that'll be that. I don't know. I don't know. And that's okay. We don't have to know all the answers. Just gotta make the best decision we can. Uh, it's just been such a long trying to get the information. I'm exhausted. My brain's exhausted, but got to do what we got to do. And um, that's that. So I hope that 
whatever those details are that you're trying to get figured out today, you will feel not alone and you will feel the oomph you need to get them figured out. I was really thankful. I was about to have to make another call. I was gonna call an infusion center just to kinda ask some questions to try to figure out if that would be a good option or not. And the home nurse called. She was super nice. And um, yeah, it was good timing and I'm thankful for that. So hoping, yeah, hoping it will work itself out. One of the things I'm very thankful for is um, initially, it's like a really long story, but the short story was we thought we were gonna have to get a different brand of IVIG and it's a blood product. And so there's a higher risk of having a reaction to a blood product because it's, it, it's different with each batch because everybody's blood is different. And that's why the requirement for the nurse because of the higher risk of reaction. And um, so I was gonna have to be going on a different brand and I was like, Ugh. I was on Gamma Guard for four years and never had a reaction, so I would feel most comfortable just continuing on that. And um, I asked them to run it through insurance to see if we could just stick with the same brand and it got covered, it was no problem. And I'm just so thankful that on top of all of the change, I can just be on the same medication. That's good, so good. Um, yeah. All right, those are my thoughts for this morning. Ugh. It's like I can hold it in while I'm trying to articulate my thoughts and then I stop talking and I'm like, oh, those feelings are still there. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna sit on that bike and I'm gonna do what I can do. Okay. Let's do it. One, two, three, team. I don't feel very enthusiastic.